This is Jonathan Joseph at the Anchor Point, episode one. Welcome, Noor Jameer. Thank you, bro. My best friend, videographer, filmmaker, and photographer. So Noor is now currently working in Raw Studios. So Noor, what is uh, the work that you are doing currently right now? If I tell you, I'll have to kill you. Ah, oh. <laughs> I'm kidding. Ah, uh, so. Uh, right now, I'm a studio producer at Raw Studios, uh, and we are working on uh, quite a lot of projects. Uh, actually, I can't tell you legally, so I'm going to leave it at that. But uh, uh, I get to work on something I like every day, so that's, I'm very proud to be here. So, no, you're a photographer, and uh, what type of genres do you like technically focus on? Uh, so I would say uh, I'm mostly part of the fashion genre. Uh, street photography is uh, something I really am personally attached to, and I do many kinds of different stuff as well, product, commercial, all of that. But I would say street photography is where my heart's at. So Noor, from the genres that you mentioned, can you use what you learn from street photography to fashion? Uh, I think so, cause I do that quite often. Uh, one thing I learned with street photography is always to be in the moment. Uh, so, like, to actually try this out, I got a film camera. Uh, and uh, so, when you're using a film camera, you start to be more conservative with the shots you take. Like these days, digital people just go and it's uh, really not photography. So, when you when I did street photography with a film camera, it really ta- taught me the value of taking each single picture properly. And when I use that concept on fashion shoots, uh, rather than just taking catalog pictures and uh, the normal left-right poses, you spend to tend to spend more time on each frame and perfect that. So you look at lighting. You try to light it naturally if possible because the sun's the best light in the world. And uh, yeah, so living. In the moment when you're taking the picture is something I learned from street photography that I think personally applies to all types of photography. That's interesting because usually fashion photography is usually static, but in your case, you're saying that you can get dynamic shots with you know good movement. Exactly, such. exactly. So no, I'm a graphic designer. Do you think uh, me learning photography will actually help me in my personal work? Uh, yeah, I think so because uh, one thing it'll get you off my feet. You always come after me for all your shoots. That's true, that's true. That's true. <laughs> but no, uh, on a real note, yeah, I think photography would ha- help you tremendously because photography is a skill that I use to constantly keep my creative brain sharpened. So, like, I'm not even talking about uh, you know buying the latest camera and. Uh, you know, booking models and uh, getting yourself a production assistant and a massive light and like that is not the photography I'm talking about. I'm talking about you know trying out street photography, just taking pictures of your siblings. Like, just try to be creative uh, with as little as possible because uh, when you do that, you keep sharpening your creative sense. You may be a graphic designer, but uh, if you do photography, you can maybe uh, work on your color theory, for example. It's one of the design principles, right? So. So as for, as a photographer, you can experiment with complementary colors, split split complementary. All these uh, color theories you can apply it in photography, see what works, and then later it will inspire you when you're doing your graphic design work or your motion graphics or literally any type of uh, field in design. You can apply those in photography to see if it works. And you know it doesn't have to be large scale like I mentioned earlier. So yeah, I think uh, doing photography just to sharpen your skills is a very good idea. I mean that I, what you said actually makes sense because I have noticed in your uh, pictures, you capture it in a way where there is like a certain good use of layout. And I believe like you know in the principles of designs, you have the rule of thirds, golden ratio, which is also the Fibonacci sequence. Uh, see, there are rules in design, but honestly, design never has rules. You there are I would say guidelines. And I think the rule of thirds, Fibonacci sequence, uh, all of those are just guidelines. So there's a popular saying in design where you learn it, then you break it. You don't just break it immediately. So once you learn it, so like the rule of thirds, I would say is a very good example for beginners to take into consideration because it uh, frame. It's an easy way to frame up your subject. Uh, so if you don't know what I'm talking about, the rule of thirds is where you. Uh, Take a take a frame and you divide it by three grids and three columns, and then you place your subject on one of the intersecting lines on the corners. 
this gives a very pleasing look because uh, it naturally frames up your subjects rather than just going for something else but i'm not saying symmetrical asymmetrical these don't work i mean there's have you heard of wes anderson he's a film director have you fucking useless bro you are anyways there's this uh, film director called wes anderson he he flips the switch he makes sure every shot he takes is as symmetrical as it can get and those frames look beautiful so there again like there there are no rules in photography there are no rules in design and you can break these often once you understand what they are so technically to to break the rules you first first know what the rules are exactly and uh, that is the concept that i started off earlier where i spent time learning all of the rules and then i broke them so i think that's something uh, you can experiment with photography and then later use it in your design I also, I also do feel that uh, we need to be photographers mainly because see when I uh, do my college projects um, it doesn't just stop from making the logo to the brand to making the package you need to know how to present the package yes. and with presenting the package comes videography photography to actually you know take some really good pictures to show about the lighting and the sensor because you know when I Uh, when we used to work together, I was the art director, so I kind of, you know, have to tell you know what lighting happens and what what mood technically goes on. And I feel like definitely a lot of gra- graphic designers or designers they don't know, uh, or I feel like they are lacking to present their package or product as well. Uh, that's true. Uh, so that is that falls under product photography, and uh, so when you. I mean you you have resources to do mockups digitally these days it's not that hard and I've seen you do it a lot of times but uh when you take a picture for real you have way more control you 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 can art direct the shot so as a graphic designer I kind of get why uh, photography is also mainly important because when we uh, st- start creating a brand first we make the logo from there we make the collaterals and then some brands have packaging and once the brand is been packaged uh most of us we use ready made mockups which i mean yes it's nice but some of it feels a bit artificial sometimes the lighting doesn't work or it feels off brand but if you actually go the extra mile and take your picture like you know present it in proper pictures it actually shows that you know it has been taken to the next step and i definitely feel like photography plays a big role in this and i'm pretty sure you can agree with me yeah i think product photography elevates branding because it gives the full story uh let's take for example the good folk shoot that we both worked on um we i remember we did this very cool shot where we put a light underneath the bottle and it gave a very glowing like quality and uh, that is something uh, i feel like uh, the the brand represented but we didn't we couldn't visually show it through just like digital mockups that was something we had to work for and i think uh, uh, the results were pretty good uh, cuz uh, it gave a new outlook to the brand i think and uh, yeah there are other instances where like props come into play and lighting plays a huge role like if you take for example the jeb ste we played with props we played with lighting and we got like uh, very specific types of lighting so that the golden foil is accentuated in the every shot so you were saying how we should be photographers now can you tell me how i can be a photographer so see these days access to photography has become a lot easier i mean digital took over and then after digital took over phones took over these days you're carrying around little tiny machines that have better cameras than that were available 10 years ago so there's no excuse for you to not take up photography and i've seen a lot of people do smartphone photography and that's a very creative field to be in uh, again it helps it it lets you sharpen your design skills you, you don't need uh, a massive uh, latest bleeding edge camera to try out color theory you don't need it like uh, there's this popular term in photography called gas which means gear accuse gear accusation syndrome and uh, people just be like i need this right lens i need this camera body i need a tripod i need this massive new light that everyone is talking about no it doesn't matter just go out there and start creating cuz uh, you constantly fail and that's the best way to learn so if you want to get into photography just use your phone that's all you need i mean yeah like i remember 
there are there are few people that I have known of like who use to get the best cameras out there and they take some really bad pictures <laughs> let's not name any names here and but yeah then i've also seen like people who actually don't have the best cameras but they make use of what they have remember when we used to work together we we worked with what we had right you know with our budgets our shoot budgets were really low and we we somehow you know, Wait, there weren't any budgets bro <laughs> Okay, yeah, there weren't any budgets. Can you believe that? Yeah. yeah. Yet we made some amazing things. Yeah. So that really gets to show that you know you don't need the tools, you don't need the uh, the good cameras. Yes, it does help, but then if you don't have the knowledge for it, then um, that is what's you know lacking, right? You need the knowledge yeah. to you know do all of this. It's the same thing how designers you know need Max or you know crazy uh, big computers to make things. You don't need that. Sometimes you can even use. the most basic computer to make something good exactly all right no i think we actually discuss a lot of topics a lot for me to learn and i appreciate sure the people watching they can learn a lot from this episode as well thank you no jamil and uh, many thanks for having me on the show and stop being so rude jody i know where you live which is right here <laughs>